FNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, a week from today, Tom O'Brien's going to be doing his uh, Timing the Trade uh, seminar, and I think uh, you're going to love it. Uh, nobody does stocks any better than uh, uh, Tom O'Brien, folks. I met him in 04 back in New York at the Money Show, and i uh, been a friend of his uh, and Tommy ever since, and uh, it's certainly worth it. My goodness. Now, let's move on. to Our, ga our guest today will be Shane Smullyan. It'll be a special show today, just uh, at the break here. But I wanted to go over a couple of things. Those of you that belong to the 24-7 service uh, that I have, I have to go through uh, because I, I, I gave a 10-minute uh, video last night because of the mistakes. Not mistakes, but the... Yeah, they were mistakes. They basically were. So I just wanted to share the folks what I go through, you know, when I'm trading. And I'm going to share with you... Uh, how it all started. Uh, this get this up here, and remember, folks, we had one heck of a good day yesterday. Not many people can say they made over fifty one hundred dollars in in trading, but my goodness, this was a this was a day. First of all, you can see the ABCD pattern that completed down here at uh, the, uh, the the one uh, one one eleven area. Now that was down nine thousand dollars, folks. We sold that high up here, okay. And at one time, we had a $5,000 profit, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, what I did was I uh, added to the position right here and right there. And, it, of course, uh, went against this right there at that 382. We ended up making, you know, basically uh, only, uh, I think we made about $600 is all. We ended up with 4100 in the gold. But you'll notice here what happened to the crude. After the crude exploded to the upside, you'll see that it pulled back exactly to the 382 retracement. You know, folks, I've been talking about this so much on the uh, show here that uh, I watch it every day. I mean, it's just uh, it, it's just uh, incredible. If you study these markets, folks, and just look for these, it'll it'll pay big dividends to you. In my opinion, of course, you know, maybe my opinion is wrong, but you know, that's what I'm looking at. Well, let's just talk a little bit about that now. So we're just going to come back here and take a quick look here at the. Uh, I have to get to the mistakes first. Hold on. <laughs> okay, now here's what we've done. Now here's here here was the first mistake right here. I sold the 382 here, and as you can see, it had a slight profit in it for just a little bit, and then we quickly lost a dollar a barrel. That took us down from nine five thousand dollar profit to about six hundred dollar profit. Okay, and then we were done. That was it. Then of course we made the 382 right here that we just talked about. And look at today, folks. You have a perfect A. B, C, D, setting right here, exactly to the tick of the low that we made yesterday down here, 111. Can, can you, you can't make this stuff up. And now this thing is trading. It's almost at 119 already, folks. This little one right here has made well over $3,500, and you've only been in it for two and a half hours. And the risk on it, look, the risk is, uh, let's say, $6,600. I mean, give me a break. I mean, that's a pretty good uh, – risk reward ratio now the reason why i talked about these because so many things were happening given and here's we're going to get another one here this was the gold market let's get this up here because this was the big winner and believe me when you start the day and you're up so much you get complacent and that's exactly what happened to me we came to this level right here and when we got up above this level right here that would have been above the 1868 level there was a possibility of buying that breakout. Well, it went from 1878. Now we're at 1859. I don't buy breakouts. And I tried to explain to folks, yeah, okay, maybe it'll work. And it did. It worked for $10. It went from 6, 1868 to 1878. And now it's at 1858. You know, that that's part of the problem when you press these things. When you're right, oh, my gosh, you're a Tommy Hugard. But when you're wrong, uh-oh. You got to be careful and get out. It's not about how much money you make, folks. It's about how much money you don't lose. But uh, as I went through and looked at these, uh, what I would have done differently, nothing in the gold market, folks. We booked 
$4,100 in that, which was good. Uh, the Euro trade, uh, I missed the absolute bottom in that. Perfect ABCD. And what did I do? I said, well, let's get greedy. Well, I didn't say greedy, but I said, let's sell the 382 and the crude uh, in the in the Euro. And by golly, what happened was got stopped out of both positions with a net profit of about $600 after being up almost two grand. So I was leaving a lot of money on the table. And that you know, frustrates the heck out of the old cowboy. So I'm saying, what in the heck am I doing here? Am I just being just too cautious or am I being too greedy? And I looked at these and I said, which ones did I do right and which ones did I do wrong? And so with about two and a half hours to go in the day, I said, look, this is it for the day. We had a good day. I'm not going to worry about this stuff the rest of the time. So I just want to, uh, you know, just take it easy. And remember, folks, one of the we have been bearish this market for so long, uh, about two and a half years, I think, uh, pretty close to that. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the negative interest rate market, folks. This is the Treasury bonds. Now it's become quite apparent here. You see, we we broke 138 today, folks. We hit 137, then rallied back to 138 again, but uh, we did break 137 here. This this has a price objective of 129 in the Treasury bonds, folks. So that's it. But uh, I want to the, the the most important ones are the ones that are that are coming up next, and I, I I'll probably have to go into the first break to finish them up because I think they are that important. I'm going to start out today with the chart we get from one of our friends from the London seminar, Mr. Nasdaq himself, or Mr. HS over in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we'll get this up here. This is the Nasdaq, folks. Now I want you to pay attention to this. Because you'll see we had the big ABCD to the downside, and we had the big rally. Now, I'm going to show you what happened because we today, this morning, we went to the 382 retracement. We took out yesterday's high by just a little bit, and that was the 382 at 129.35. The high was 129.45, and it broke 200 handles to the downside. This is really important, folks, because of the things that are happening in all of these indices. You know, I keep saying, <laughs> that's a silly thing to say. Anyway, I will, uh, what I was going to say is, you know, a lot of people don't see it. You know, folks, I probably don't either, but at least I believe what I see. And so that's what I wanted to talk to you about here to show you some of the things, because this is what upset me more than anything else. If you remember a week ago, uh, back on, well, it's been 10 days. Back on the 20th, I said we completed, uh, we were talking about the low coming in. I'll bring that chart up one more time. I keep bringing it up just for remembering it because we'll probably see it again someday and something else. But this was the cycles that we were looking at. We were looking for the market to bottom 17 days lower than the day where we were back in October of 1987. That was March 5th. You had 17 days. That took you down to the 22nd of uh April, uh, 22nd of May, which was a Sunday, and the market bottomed on that Friday, and we had a very strong rally uh, since that time, one of the best. But that was a big ABCD. And I said, these ABCDs, I mean, this is a huge thing. But stay tuned, folks. The important things are coming up soon. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 okay folks uh, yesterday was very important for a whole bunch of reasons uh, if you remember we talked about those big ABCDs that occurred on the 20th of May and I wanted to put the first chart up, which was the chart of the Russell. It's the second largest of the the um, contracts for the stock indices. Number one is the S&P. Number two is Russell. Number three is NASDAQ. And number four is the Dow Jones, based on the open interest. Now, you'll notice here that yesterday's low was a 382 retracement within two points, folks. I mean, point double. I mean, we're talking about hundreds decimal points. I mean, of the exact low... Uh, that we made on the 12th of May. Now remember that the Russell bottomed on the 12th, the others bottomed on the 20th. So it made a 382 retracement and I said from the very beginning after this rally started, watch for two things. Watch for a 382 retracement or watch for an ABCD pattern. This is not something that I made up folks. This is right out of Gartley's book on pages 220 to 224. He talks about that. He said, watch for those first ABCD moves after an extended move, and that'll give you a pretty good idea of where to enter without risking very much. And that's what happened. So let's walk through and look at some of the others. Now, re I realize that I saw these after the fact. Uh, the market was still open, but I saw it much after the fact. I was just you know, getting ready to do the show today when I started seeing it, and then I started getting... Uh, emails from people say, hey, did you see this? And you see this? And I said, yeah, well, I did, but I didn't see it till a little bit too late. And the next, this is this should have been a day yesterday. I should have had a day yesterday like Basil had yesterday, but I missed it. And I'll put this up here. Now, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, you'll notice here, there's your 382 retracement right here. It misses it. That's off the low that we had back here on the 20th. But look at the perfect A, B, C, D, folks. That's within 10 Dow points. That's 50 bucks. And what does it do? It rallies $4,000. Now, you notice that it did not take the highs out that we made back here. Now, that's important. And I'll try to explain my opinion of why I think it's important. Because, you know, we have other markets that are acting a little bit differently. Now, let's get this one up here. This will be the next one, which will be the NASDAQ. And I want to thank our good friend Henry over in Las Vegas uh, for sharing the NASDAQ information uh, for me. We met him back in April in London. You'll notice now that the NASDAQ did make a higher high 
than a week ago Monday. You can see the A, B, C, D. Abs here again, absolute perfect. You can see 0.84 one and 0.12. That's that equals to one. That's and it it, it doesn't make the 382. It misses it by quite a bit, but it's a perfect A, B, C, D. And we make a new high and then roll over. Yesterday we had Stan Harley on the line, and he said. There's a thing out there that we have to worry about, and that's a thing called high translation. And that means that if you take out these lows right back here on May 20th, this is high translations. It means that the cycle crested very early in the move and not late in the move. And boy, that, folks, is what we call in Jamie Dimon's terms, the hurricane's on the way, baby. The hurricane's on the way. So if that happens... Get ready, because it's going to be rocking and rolling like some of these people have never seen before, and that's it. Now, we want to do uh, one other one here uh, that we did the Dow Jones, we did the Russell, do the NASDAQ, and now we're going to do the old stop and pee. Now, the stop and pee was interesting. Oh, I shouldn't call it that. That's what, we'd, that's what we used to talk it in the, on the floor back in those days when, when Wyatt Earp was the sheriff of Tombstone. You'll notice that the ABCD pattern in the S&P did not hit. We did not make it, and we tried it again, and we didn't make it. Then we had a pretty good rally, and we're getting back down there again. That number, folks, is at 4050. So my assumption is that if we break below 4050 today on a Friday, it's going to get pretty nasty uh, next week would be my, my assumption of what we're looking at. And part of that is based on two things. One, the way that bonds are collapsing, it basically tells you that the Federal Reserve has got real problems trying to control that bond market, and they're not having any any, any luck with it. So uh, that's another reason we've got to be uh, you know, very, very uh, positive about. Now, we'll get back into this, the, the, the second mistake that I didn't make a mistake, and I, I, I caught myself in this. This was the trade that we were doing in the gold. Everybody – that belongs to the 24-7 and listening to the show here. I talked about the importance of that ABCD uh, in the gold. You'll see there's where it completed. I've already showed you the chart. That's when we were down there at 18, 1830, 1831. We rallied up to uh, 1868. Uh, that was uh, the, uh, the target on that particular trade. And so uh, I, I said, as I was doing the video, I said, you know, I, let's just buy it on a breakout above 1868. And then about 30 seconds after that, I remembered Mark Douglas sitting behind me at this office saying, uh, do what you do best. And breaking out trades, folks, is not what I do best. I've already proved it in the euro and, and the in the uh a crude oil, uh, but I didn't want to do it here, so I decided no. I said we'll just get out of it. 1868. It rallied to 1878. Now it's $20 lower at 1858. So now if I did that, I would be in the same position that I was in the crude oil. I'd be giving back about two grand of the money that I'd make instead of making 4100. I'd be making 2100. So that's that's the stuff that I have to go through every day. And, and when you go to listen to Tom's show next Friday, he'll go through those same things because all traders go through that. You have to decide, you know, what your strength is and what's your weakness. My strength is A, B, C, D, a tiny bit of Fibonacci and stuff, and uh, there's a few patterns that are involved. And that's what that's what will get me to the promised land. So I'm not worried about that. I wasn't concerned. You know, hey, I had a, you know, had a good day. Nothing wrong with the, the folks for the 24-7. Had a heck of a day in the gold market yesterday. Anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. So what we want to remember is it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. And that's a real important one. One of the things that we talked about yesterday was the fact that we had one heck of a move in copper. Let's get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. And we'll get this up here. You'll see there's where we were in copper. You can see we went right up to the 61% retracement. Folks, this was the largest daily move in copper in two and a half years. Even, even bigger than these back in here when we had these big runs. On a percentage basis, it was up, I believe, 6% and stopped dead in its tracks within two points of the exact 61% retracement up there at, uh, at, at uh, 550. The high was, I think, 552, and now we're trading at 10 cents lower than that. And uh, I happened to be uh, chatting with Mr. Uh, Shane Smullyan, who will be our guest pretty soon. And he uh, was mentioning to me at that time that, look, we're getting ready to sell copper here on the close. And I said, yeah, it looks like a pretty good idea. 
And I, I said that to myself, not to him. He doesn't need any help, folks. Anyway, so that's what was happening in the copper market. And this is Dr. Copper, folks. So, you know, maybe the stock market hits some type of major resistance here. We're going to find out soon enough. But more than important than that, we're going to have the wolf trader himself coming up, Shane Smolian. And uh, we'll have him on as our guest here in just a little bit. Remember, next week, folks, on Friday, you got Tom O'Brien for the full day. Take advantage of that, folks. You're going to sit side by side with him. Uh, he's a pretty friendly dude, plus he knows a lot of stuff, and you'll get your money's worth for sure. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Shane Smolian, the wolf trader, on the line. Are you there, Shane? I'm here, Larry. How are you? I'm good. Listen, I'm going to tell the folks uh, how we uh, first met. It was 2013. You came out here to visit me, and uh, we uh, had a nice couple of days. You ended up spending, I think, pretty much the whole week, as I recall. And then we collaborated on the book that you wrote for uh, the Astro Cycles book that turned out to be, a, with Wiley, that turned out to be a really nice book. But uh, when I first met you, I realized you had some really special qualities. Folks, I've said many times uh, here uh, a few things that I have on my bucket list, and really there's not many there. But one of the main ones was to be able to see, you know, a section coming in on Astro Cycles uh, on TFN, on well, probably TFNN also, but CNBC and also with uh, Bloomberg. 
And I said, I hope to see that sometime, but they have a 10 minute, maybe even longer segment, you know, showing how these cycles uh, line up. And I said, it'll probably come from somebody like MIT or Harvard or something like that. The second thing on my bucket list was to have someone automate the astro cycle stuff that we talk about and look at. To, we could automate them to see if they actually work. Well, Mr. Shane Smolian has been working on that for quite a few years, I think. And about last year, I put him in touch with some folks in Chicago that do a lot of brokerage business. And they're very, very uh, professional and they really scrutinize everything and uh, we, I chatted with the folks there and uh, they said well we'll look it out see what he's got as far as paper trading and stuff and as of May 1st uh, you started I think uh, started the live trading is that correct? That's correct and I remember speaking to my friend Bill back in Chicago and he said if he can do 2% a month he said the kid's going to be a superstar well very disappointing, very disappointing, folks. He didn't make the 2% this past month in May. As of the 31st of May, he was up 8.2%. And what's so funny, folks, this is the 3rd of June, and he's already up 5%. So you've done something. I don't know what it is, buddy, but my hat's off to you, and I want to see you go to the big time, and uh, you just did a just great job. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell the folks what you're looking at. One other caveat here, folks. I really don't care if you folks out there believe astrology works or not because it's nothing but cycles and number. I know that it works. Have I ever found the Holy Grail? Nope. Has Sean found it? Nope. But you can beat it if you look at these numbers because they work pretty good. Now I'm going to turn it over. Go right ahead, my friend. Well, thank you very much, Larry. I appreciate those kind words. It's been an it's been an honor to work with you in TFNN uh, in these years that we've known each other. And uh, you know, this is just the next step. I mean, we're we're just getting started, but you know, we're we're definitely off to a good start. So that's that's all that we could hope for. So uh, let's talk about the S and P. So I've got a little bit of S and P today. <clears throat> so the main focus today is going to be gold because I'm going to talk more about gold this weekend. But the S and P, uh, very quickly here. Uh, this is a graph here that I show. This is my daily graph. I just want to point out a couple of things. I have a bunch of arrows on the chart here, but each of these colors means something different. This red arrow back here on 2.7 is the Fed juice. This has been in a cell since February the 7th. Uh, you go all the way here, you can see the geomagnetic storm on uh, March 31st. Uh, optimized Bradley's in the cell. The eclipse came in here. The stelium peak was here. Uh, yesterday, we, we had a, a pretty nice long trade. We, we were long the whole day yesterday. Uh, but the double lunar cycle, notice it was in a cell since February the 2nd. All of a sudden, it comes in on a buy for one day, catches that, and turns back down. Uh, ultimately, I, what I'm looking at here is most of this astro uh, <clears throat> forecasting cycles, most of these cycles are still pointed down uh, for the S&P 500. S&P 500 has been following a pretty nice channel here. Uh, I use these Fibonacci speed lines, but you can see most of these rallies have been retraced relatively quickly. Uh, we did have that big March rally, which coincided with the Jupiter cycle. Uh, but this particular rally here, it's it, it started out very strong like the March one, but it's sputtering now. Uh, we have The thing I want to point out to everybody is at each stage of the road here, we have very different conditions in regard to the, the Fed and the tightening. So what we saw on March 31st was very different than we saw in December. And what we see right now is very different than March 31st. The Fed started starting quantitative tightening. And I'm already picking this up. So uh, some people pointed out to me that, you know, officially it doesn't show up until the, the 15th of June. But I track multiple internals of the Fed. I'm already seeing this show up. So even if they're not going to start till the 15th on the treasuries, I'm already showing the, the tightening show, show up here uh, on these Fed internals and the Fed use. And this is why I do what I do. I track all of these Fed operations in relation to the S&P. And we come up with something called the Fed juice. And this is already collapsing. So... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is this is very, very, very uh, dangerous for the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is facing a lot of headwinds now, and we need to look at everything in the context of what is going on. And this is a very different phase right now happening with the quantitative tightening. We've seen this before. We've seen very light versions of it. We've seen some, we've seen some wild attempts of it, like in the summer of 2010 when Bernanke tried to start selling, very short-lived, and then we saw what Powell did in 2019 but ultimately this is a much tighter uh tightening phase than we've seen and i think it's going to have a very very strong negative impact on equities so just keep in mind that when we're, when we're comparing 
market rallies and market lows and retracements and all these levels, it has to be in the context of what's going on with a larger uh, picture with the central bank. So I just wanted to point that out to everybody. Um, what I want to talk about today a little bit is gold. I, I, I started a webinar last Saturday, and uh, I'm going to continue it this Saturday, but I'm going to kind of run through what we talked about. Because everybody has been talking about gold, particularly in this crisis period that we saw. So gold has had previous ties to currency. Uh, it's a previous store of value. People looked at this against inflation, uh, past hedges against declines. Uh, so it's been a very, it's kind of been like the old yell. I call it old yeller, where everybody just kind of goes back to their old, old reliable, old friendly dog, uh, which is gold. Uh, it has industrial components, it's conductors, reflective infrared radiation. Jewelry, uh, I call it nostalgia. It's symbolic of royalty, like the king and Leo. That's those are the colors of, of gold. Uh, it has a lot of entrenched um, meaning in, our, in the psyche, in the unconscious, our collective unconscious. Gold is very strong in in our psyche. So it's not. It's definitely not going anywhere. Uh, but it's like I said, it's been a fan favorite because it's it has physical properties. Got had a good job of holding value across time. Like I said, inflation hedge, and people have traditionally viewed this with money. Now, there's good reason for this because gold was money for many centuries, and it was tied to the currencies until very recently. I mean, even Switzerland stayed stayed on this uh, for a while. But uh, gold has not been responding in recent years like it should. So the question is, why is this the case? Why why isn't gold, particularly in this COVID uh, inflation, this hyperinflation, why isn't gold responding. So I think there's two major changes since 2008 that I think we need to pay attention to. So I'm always looking for the changing landscapes. Uh, just because gold meant something 20, 30, 50, or 100 years ago doesn't mean it means the same thing now. So the first shift that I want to talk about in terms of the value of gold is quantitative easing. I think this radically changed what gold means to us in terms of currencies. So in the 2008 financial crisis uh, in quantitative easing, gold rallied through 2011. It, it, it did what it was supposed to do. It rallied during the crisis, and it went a little bit past uh, the recovery. But then QE began to dominate. So QE originally looked as if it was a temporary phenomenon, but now it's become the new norm. So interest rates are no longer the primary tool of the Federal Reserve. They come in and they purchase these assets now. Um, so gold now is a much smaller part of the monetary equation. Hey, we're going to take a little break here, folks. We'll be back with Shane Smoley and TheWolfTrader.com. Stay with us, 877-927-6648. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. Speaking with Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. You want to continue, young man? Absolutely. So uh, we were talking about gold in the financial crisis. So gold is a much smaller part of the equation now uh, because QE is dominating. Basically, the Fed's saying we don't need gold anymore. Like it's you, you're just it's no longer part of the equation. So the demand for gold drops as a function of currency. Now, there's still demands for gold. People still view it as a, a value, a store of value and there's industrial purposes. And like I said, the countries still accumulate reserves of it. But it's, it changed. It changed uh, dramatically in 2008. So I'm just trying to outline two. These are two major changes. The next major change that I see in terms of gold is Bitcoin. So um, Bitcoin in the 2020 COVID crisis, gold runs up through COVID uh, 220 and 220. But then in the peak, uh, what happens? Well, there's a seasonal peak in gold uh, when we get into August. Now, I'll talk about this this week. We're going to talk about cycles this weekend, the Jupiter cycle and the seasonal peak. But then gold failed, and this was I think this was a pretty big warning sign to people that if it was ever going to rally during this largest inflation of 40 years, uh, this was the time that it was supposed to do it, and it didn't. Uh, and so I look at that as a negative divergence. So, we, so we've already seen now how gold responds to a crisis, and it was weak. So we already had the dress rehearsal. Uh, Bitcoin rallies, rallied strongly in, with an inverse correlation to gold. And Bitcoin is a direct competitor now. It's it's direct competitor to currency and a store of value concept. And so this is a this is a shift. So these two major shifts here are what what I think are important. Now th these are this is an important chart here. This is the the COVID crisis here. So you can see that that gold does rally for a bit into here. But notice it starts to fall. It falls during this huge inflationary period that we had. And notice that Bitcoin starts to rally here. So again. What happened? I think gold did the best that it could. It's in gold, and, and in my view, gold did inflate. It's already inflated. This is the inflated version of gold that you're going to see. Uh, and I think now what we're going to see, as I've talked about this before, when we get these big declines, we have seen, we saw the dress rehearsal for this in COVID, but we see where gold and Bitcoin and the S&P can all go down together. I think that's what's happening now. I think we're starting to see that coming up. So <clears throat> many people have a theory uh, when you watch a lot of these shows, and, and I, I try to watch uh, certain shows to get perspectives of people, uh, the gold bucks feel like it's going to catch up. This is this is just the next, you know, gold's going to catch up, and the next crisis is going to rally gold. Well, I kind of feel like that's like saying you're in the movie theater, the movie played, the movie's over, they're cleaning up the popcorn and the drinks around you, and you're still sitting there staring at the screen waiting for the movie to start. The movie's over. Uh, we already saw how gold was going to do in a crisis, and it wasn't that good. So, my view is maybe gold did the best it could do. Maybe this is the inflated version of gold. And if that's true, uh, then this is a warning. So I think even a slight deflationary pressure could send gold sharply lower. And I think that it could be going from, Larry, it could be going from 8% inflation to 5%. That could be enough to send gold much lower. So I think we got to be careful here with gold uh, because I think it has changed its meaning. So 
this is an example of a negative divergence. This was the Fed juice here. So just bear with me on this. I'm going to explain to you what I'm talking about. So this green line here, this is the Fed trying to push, uh, trying to push stimulus into this market here or liquidity after the March peak right here. So this peak right here, this is the March peak in the S&P. And so, so I'm going to draw this with an arrow. So right here, this is the March peak here. And so the Fed tries to stimulate after this. But what happens? The S&P starts diverging against it here. And then when the Fed turns down, the S&P really collapses. So I think a similar thing might be happening with gold. And so we have to be extra careful here. I think gold uh, is particularly vulnerable right now. I don't think it's as vulnerable as cryptos. Cryptos are really in bad shape. But I think they could all go down together here. And I think it's a very real possibility, at least. Let's just say that. I mean, we don't know for sure, but uh, based on what I'm seeing, I think that uh, gold gold could be in, into some serious problems here. Uh, so where is gold going? Well, I like to look at uh, divergences. So I have this normalized MACD uh, that I look. I like to look for divergences. So gold has a divergence going back to 2008. Uh, these divergences can go on for years, but they the thing about these is they tend to resolve. And so I see support on gold around 950 to 1100, somewhere around there. I think there's going to be a nice firm support there. Uh, but I think there's a good chance it goes back there before it makes a rally at this point. I think I, mean, I think Bitcoin's going to go down a lot more than that. Uh, I think they're both going to go down. Gold has showed uh, less volatility. Now, this is an example of what I'm talking about here on the divergence here. This is the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar makes makes this divergence. So this, this down here, this is my indicator here. This is called the normalized price adjusted MACD. Uh, you can see this is the dollar going back here to 2004. Now you can see the dollar is starting to fall into here. You can see the dollar is falling, but this indicator here is making a strong divergence up here. And so what happens is when, when the dollar starts to rally like this, it comes back to where that divergence starts, which is right here. So what happens with these rallies is they may take five, six, ten years to resolve, but they do resolve back to the original place of the divergence here. And so that's an example of the U.S. dollar. Uh, we've seen similar examples of this before with something like the euro. Uh, this is going back to the early 2000s on the euro also. You can see here that the euro was rallying here. This was back in early 2000s, and you can see that this was making a negative divergence here. Okay, and then at some point, you can see this is where the divergence starts. It does come back and retrace back to this point where that divergence starts. And so these are long-term perspectives. That, and again, they can take years to fulfill. But again, if you look at gold here, this is the chart that I want to point out to everybody. I just showed those first two to show you that these divergences do happen and they do fill. But you can see here that this divergence on gold goes all the way back to about 2008 here. You can see this is where it starts right here. Now, gold has been rallying and rallying, rallying and rallying, but notice this divergence is getting lower and lower and lower and lower down here. And even when it comes up during the crisis, it just comes up and hits that trend line right here. So it's the same trend line that it was here and here. So ultimately, if gold follows the path uh, that these other uh, symbols do, I see a low coming in here somewhere around this 1100. This is right into here. This is about 1100. And I think that's going to come in around 2024 to 2025. And I have more cycle. I have cycles this weekend to back this up. I, I looked at the Jupiter cycle. Uh, there's a lot of cycle lows coming in on gold around this 2024 to 2025. So again, this is not like a crash, like Bitcoin crash, but I do think it's a, it's a significant pullback. And I think this is this is likely where gold is going uh, based upon this divergence here, because these things tend to satisfy. Uh, their pullbacks. So I, I just wanted to point this out. I, I, like I said, I did a webinar last weekend, and we're going to talk this weekend about the, all the cycles, but they're all showing a low coming in around that 2024, 2025 area. And I think that's going to be a significant point to watch in gold here. So so I, again, I expect weakness in gold here. I expect much more severe weakness in the cryptos. Uh, you know, Like I said, I, Larry, I've been talking to you about this 10,000 level. I have the odds now. They're, they're at about 82.5% somewhere in there that we're going to hit 10,000 or lower on Bitcoin based upon my models. Uh, and, and that's much more severe than gold. You know, this is, this is a pullback, but it's not like, you know, Bitcoin going under 10,000. I mean, that's, that's serious. So th I, I think they're both linked and I think they're both going to be coming down. 
Shane, I have a question. Sticking, you're talking about statistics. Why don't you ask Jackson? What were the odds of the Celtics making nine out of ten uh, three pointers in the fourth quarter to pull the game out? Could you ask uh, him what those odds were? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not going to talk to him. He's, I, I he's pretty upset. I, I actually, <laughs> I can't believe they made nine out of ten, but that's the way it goes. I imagine yeah. he's a happy camper. <laughs> yeah, they're, hey, they're we'll resilient. take a break. We'll be back with Shane Smolly, folks. WolfTrader.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Hey, folks, we're back with Shane Smolian. Shane, you want to tell the folks two things. One, how they can get in touch with you, and also uh, if they're interested in getting uh, involved in your managed program, how do they contact you? Sure. Uh, well, you can reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com, and the website is www.WolfTraderFutures.com or www.FedJuice.com. You can reach us there. Uh, if, if you want to – if you want to – Check out the auto trading. What you would do is – I'm just going to show the site here. You would go to the site, and then up here there's a tab called auto trading, and then uh, it just gives you more information, and then you can check out the, the live results of the system down there if you want to check that out. Uh, but there's a contact field here. If you fill that out, uh, you'll get information about how to, how to set up an account there. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you just go there, like I said, wolftraderfutures.com on the auto trading, and then the, the live results are – that's a tear sheet. So like each day the accounts are updated so you can you can see how it's doing. Oh, that's fair enough. That's great. Well, listen, Absolutely. I want to wish you the 
I'll have you have you on in a couple of weeks. But thank you for all this great information. And uh, you know, can you tell everybody over there in Miami Beach that uh, we sure miss them. Maybe they'll come on the show. You can see how what beautiful children you have. I know Jackson would have no trouble because he's a <laughs> he, he's a real entertainer. That's for sure. Yes, you he know, is. Yes, a, he is. It's, he's really a good. I watch you send the videos of him shooting baskets, and my gosh, he's pretty good for you know a kid that's only nine years old. That's fabulous. Yeah, we started that actually yeah. during COVID. My wife was like, you know, we need to. She's like, we need to do. We need to start getting out of the house. So every Sunday we go and do an activity. We physically yeah. go to a park. We either play soccer or basketball. We go. We, all the whole family goes and we play. And so he's really. We started with soccer, but he's really into basketball now. And so. You know, we go out there now, and he dribbles two basketballs, and we're shooting. And so we go out every Sunday, and we go to a different park, and we find the hoops, and, and we sh we shoot hoops all the time. So that's his yeah, big that's thing great. now. That's yeah. good. Well, anyway, make sure you come on again soon, probably in another week or so. And if you have something special you want to talk, you know, let us know, and we'll get you on here, uh, spur of the moment for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody. You bet. Have a great week. You bet. Yep, the week's coming up, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Try to do something good for your neighbors because they all need help. See you on the flip side, boys and girls. Building wealth trading in the stock market 